Hello, Ryan. Hey, hey. Good to see you. And uh, today we have this special meeting to discuss about, um, to talk about your journey and, and, and uh, you know, to, to talk about what is awakening, um, how it was for you and, and uh, um, as well, probably maybe it's nice to speak about life as well and, and you know, how things go on in life that it's not all roses after all and <laughs> there's some hard work behind it <laughs> right yeah so um you want to tell us a bit uh, about your journey yeah yeah um yeah i guess if i'm to think about like how far it kind of went back um i just think of like when i was um I remember being really young, maybe like five to seven and kind of having what I would in hindsight think of as like an initial awakening. Um, uh, I remember being just like in a park and kind of looking out in this uh, field and for a moment there was just kind of a dropping away of, in hindsight of course, but um, just like a dropping away of hell. And just a complete stillness and no, yeah, like the subject object um, sensation went away or the subject object experience went away and there was just what is, or there was just stillness. Um, and it was profoundly, um, I would say in a way, exhilarating. And I didn't really, I just kind of noticed it happened and then you know moved on I guess at that age and kind of continued having those experiences um I remember like being 13 and having a really big heart opening in my classroom and for I don't know maybe a week just sending out there's felt, felt like there was like energy pouring through my heart um and just kind of like sending prayers of um you know, goodwill or good, yeah, just sending prayers and um, to to my other to my peers, and then yeah, in high school, having similar experiences, and then at some point about the age sixteen, hearing about Buddhism and reading books, and then developing some commitment and some level of like meditation. Um, and yeah, like a yoga, like a Hatha yoga practice, um, and kind of like that's seemingly this like pretty intense search began. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And just, it became really intense. And then at the age of, I would say 19, um, the biggest, like, like the largest awakening i guess i could say happened or occurred with uh watching a video of jiddu krishnamurti in his kind of intensity he stated something and like in the video waved his hand and um just yeah a complete opening occurred um and i was yeah i was in my bedroom funny enough my dad came in and told me to turn it down it was in the evening <laughs> turn down the the volume um, there's too much light going on eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so uh so yeah and then i recall just like turning it off or whatnot and then i walked out and there was like some these woods uh like little little nature place down the road and and i sat there for i don't know how long um and in just a state of kind of effortless joy and presence um in a way, it seemed uh, pretty easy going for a while, but um, then like great challenges happened. Um, I think that kind of like the difference of like this new, um, I don't know, you could say experience, and then a lot of like conditioning and psychological challenges kind of like maybe wanting to come into balance, but, um, yeah, I kind of, for a long time, it was pretty, it got really, really difficult. Um, 
and yeah, what would probably be like, you know, spiritual emergency or spiritual yeah, yeah. crisis occurred and mm. it was very yeah, difficult. And all. Consciousness then puts everything into the surface, you know, brings it all up to be healed. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there is, yeah. And there, is, I think the greatest challenge is, well, for one, how challenging some of that conditioning is and then um i think a part of me was um not not capable but just found it yeah didn't want to to deal with that <laughs> basically um sometimes yeah. when when the challenges maybe are are too big you know then then it's 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 a it's it's way more difficult without support mm -hmm. and uh, you know with, with support and um, having a, a guide a teacher you know somebody to help out then then uh, it would have been a lot easier probably and quicker yeah definitely yeah which at the time i definitely found it hard to find someone who really like I would go to say therapists or I would go to certain teachers, but I don't, I actually don't, I mean, there was maybe a couple individuals that had some level of understanding, but um, it was either like therapy or like someone who just didn't, didn't potentially didn't go through those types of challenges. And it was maybe a bit of an easier road or they were older um, when, um, yeah, they, you know, experience their way. That, that is the, the challenging part of spirituality. You know, everybody is kind of putting forward the, 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 the easy side or the, the beautiful side of it, but then there's a challenging side of it. And, uh, you know, a, a good teacher would have, would be able to help with that mm -hmm. and, and, and just to, to go you know, to meet where one is and especially in the challenging times. Yeah. So, so how did it progress? Uh, yeah, along? and then, yeah, so yeah. things kind of settled down and then, um, yeah, over time I just picked up that kind of desire again to, yeah, take a look at what is, what am I truly and what is, um, what is reality and there is kind of just um i would say that was the biggest thing that kind of was alive in me was what is yeah what is truth and kind of a in a way a love for truth um versus maybe when i was younger um which maybe that was there but was more like oh i want enlightenment and i want my suffering to end um, I think there was more of this undercurrent of like, yeah, what is, what is real? And, mm -hmm. and I'm going to, I'm going to so, tap. So at that point, it, it changed, like you, you kind of were ready to go again, uh, deeper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yes, and, yep. how, and when, what unfolded afterwards? I had met a teacher previous, um, I don't know how old I was maybe 21 just just in one session like he had come into my hometown outside of Chicago um and I reached out to him um just asking for like a one time session but he doesn't he didn't do that anymore so he just offers um a sadhana a practice and so I began that that was maybe four years ago now or so and um i did that for for yeah a couple years and then i had come into hearing about yeah more like transmissions and um um kind of sought that out and yeah i guess yeah had found you through that down the road down in in that search basically and then
the benefit I found in transmissions is just, is just, uh, in a way like the effortless nature of the allowing of, um, yeah, what, however you might want to say it, the transmission, <laughs> the energy, uh, transfer or, um, so, so where did it bring you in you like underlying behind or the, the what is the your relationship we can say between your self or your deepest self and that which arises and happens it brought me to kind of just like a f- fundamental um almost like stability, I guess you could say, just something, it was, it became over time, it became, instead of having these glimpses of um, that which is just stable, that which is, um, I guess you could say, ever present to, yeah, there's just almost like this, like knowing almost in the background always basically um comparative to before where it was like this on and off even though even though it was always there you hear that you like hear oh it's ever present so it's here always but there's something maybe previous in my mind that like was still looking somewhere else (laughs) as opposed to right here um even though it's like said time and time and time again Um, my mind was having, was trying, attempting to find it somewhere else. I don't know, really know how to explain it, but it wasn't just remaining. It can happen in two ways, you know, when the mind has an idea of what it's supposed to be, and then it's looking for it, or um, in other way, it, it, the the mind may have uh, what I would call better, it's it's a you know a certain conditioning, a certain energetic disbalance, and then it it pulls you know your focus into the mind, and then it 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 doesn't allow to experience that stability, that fundamental presence. So so either one way or another, uh, that what takes one out of that fundamental presence which is right now our fundamental self or or, you know emptiness if we use a buddhist term and so how would you describe it in 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 for you what what it what that is um do you mean uh how it occurred for me or how would i describe the fundamental well, maybe let's let's say how did it how did it occur to you? If you want to elaborate on that, and then oh what yeah, it is for yeah. So I say I, when you were talking about the two ways of the mind, I would just say on a, on in my personal experience, it was the second one um, that it was caught up um, as opposed to having this idea. Yeah, it was kind of just caught up in yeah, not be, not being able to rest basically because yeah, so um, the pull was hard you know the energetic psychological pull was hard and then it takes you out and then yeah you feel like yeah i feel this and that and, and it seems that this fundamental presence it seems that it's not here but it is actually always here but you don't experience it you know so yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it it doesn't seem so you know but when you kind of when it settles down, when the waves of the lake settle down, then ah, oh, it's it's always been here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So now maybe you can elaborate what it is to you this fundamental. I would say it is, yeah, again, it's, there's a stability in it or a, almost like a safety in it. Um, like almost like the sense, no matter what occurs, mm-hmm. 
what I am or what you know, this this is will never be could never be removed. Um, and it's, I mean, yeah, I would say in resting, you know, um, yeah, it's a feeling of resting or it's a feeling of, you know, there's like a, the weight off my shoulders, I guess I could say. Mm-hmm. And it is, yeah, just like a feeling of there's like this kind of light, almost lighthearted nature to it. It takes away some level of like seriousness. Seriousness. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's like a little, yeah, it's, it's light and like with that, there's kind of like a sense of, yeah, maybe more play or more. Um, I mean, there's definitely still like a seriousness about uh, truth and um, about um, living a life that's aligned with that. But there's also on the other side of that, yeah, there's like a more playfulness and there's like a lighthearted and not so, yeah, not so attached energy. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a lovely way of putting it. And and the, this fundamental emptiness or stability or openness, it, it, you you disidentify from energy you know the energy can still come and by energy i mean you know not only energetic sensations but psychological emotional things they can still come uh, but you kind of don't get lost in it there's no identity there's no more identity there you know it's like like a cloud comes in the sky, but the sky, it, it, it doesn't get lost in it. It's not identifying with the cloud, you know. It knows it's the sky. The cloud is also here. There's no denial that, you know, sometimes emotion comes up or whatever. But this, you mentioned the word safety. It, 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 uh, it puts something deeply at rest, something way, way deeper. And even if something still pulls, you know, the 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 energy or psychology, but behind there is something much more. And 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 that is the fundamentally what what is the full consciousness. You know, it's it's and of course, as as one integrates more and more and more, you know, then then we know, like, let's say Ramana Maharashi, you know, for him, the the self was like so um, integrated, and his teaching was via the stillness or silence. Uh, so so so, to him, like the 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 world. Uh, the whole world would 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 be like a, just a passing phenomena that fades in and fades out in 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 his stability. But of course, um, that level of stability, you know, is it, it or or strength of 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 the self, it grows over over you know with integration. Because even Ramana, you know, he was. After his initial awakening, he spent years and years in silence and just talking to nobody, you know, and and, and only at some point later, he started to uh, explain, you know, more clearly what, what he was experiencing. So it's, 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 it's quite common, you know, uh, arriving to full consciousness that uh, you know there might be some unresolved energies and cycles of life which are circumstantial you know because it's not easy especially to live in the western world um you know um, uh, we there, there are plenty more challenges in the <laughs> west living in the western world because you still gotta earn your living you know wife and kids and job and everything so that that takes a lot of 
focus as well in, in perspective. Uh, and and how do you find as time goes by now, you know, how are you finding uh, this balance or or um, you know the the what happens uh, to you? How how is your experience as time goes by? I think to some extent the things like the challenges become um well, I guess actually in my experience, it seems like everything is arising, like all these things that I can no longer avoid. <laughs> I think there was oh, a previous, yes. oh, I could seemingly avoid. Uh, you have no uh, luxury of avoidance anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it seemed like, yeah, like you can not take responsibility or things of that nature. And now it's like all, all just, it just all comes up and you, and you, you have to take care of, or you have to meet it. And there, yeah, the integration process, I mean, and for one thing, it's a little sidetracked, but like, which is like not really talked about. I mean, here and there it's talked about and there's certain teachers that definitely talk about it, but it's definitely, like you said, it's not all roses almost in a, in a way there's like some level that it's like almost more challenging um, because you can't avoid this anymore. You can't avoid everything that's happening in your inner life or in your external life or whatnot, like you kind of have to face it <laughs> and um, it's here, it's in front of you. Um, with that said, even though it seems, I said it seems more challenging, but it's, there is like a level of, of the, just even having the capacity to, like a greater capacity to step out of it or step mm -hmm. aside and then, not see it as not identify so much or grasp hold of it. Um, but it is also like, yeah, you have responsibility to, um, to move through that conditioning or to, um, yeah, to move through these challenges. And again, yeah, like I said, there's no avoidance of it. So, um, and I just, I think I had this thought that at some point I would get to this place and maybe down the road or something, but that it would just be smooth. And I just had this thought of whatever yeah, thoughts life I had. will no longer go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somehow just, uh, the world disappears and, uh, <laughs> that's it. Um, no more. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's a common, common illusion, common, common assumption yeah very common assumption um, and and you see some some sometimes uh, sometimes for people it may take decades to arrive to full consciousness and sometimes it may take some years uh, in some very rare instances it can happen very quickly but the job still needs to be done you know you you one still needs to meet all emotions all feelings the psychological states to bring you know everything has to come into the light of consciousness as as jesus said you know no no star no stone gets unturned you know so and 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 uh so everything comes into more light, more awareness. And, and, and that's what actually, if one would ask, so why is that? You know, why, you know, why do we need to do it? It is necessary to do it because it, it liberates more awareness, more the light of consciousness. Yeah, because these mechanisms of of lower energetics they even if you arrive at full consciousness you know um they they still have a pull and mm -hmm. and and you know they would be more in the experience of day-to-day -day life but as you process them you know that part or that particular kind of uh, state or energy experience it, it gets resolved it it burns out. So in 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 
it's known as a burning out samskaras. Mm-hmm. And, and um, again, a common misconception is that you can't get enlightened without burning all samskaras. And that's not the case because you can realize who you really are. And now I'm using very precise words. You can realize who you really are and then continue burning off what you had, you know, what was there. Because, you know, you, you, it, first of all, it's called self realization, not problem solving. <laughs> right. Yeah. So self realization means realizing who you truly are. And, 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 and then, you know, you continue to resolve. Because all these energies need to come into balance mm-hmm. and, and things really start to, you know, have the capacity to come into balance. Because uh, as long as you are not fully self-realized who you really are, so there's still still a stick in the wheel. Yeah, there's still a stick in the wheel. But now the stick is off and the wheel can continue spinning, the wheel of life can continue spinning but now without the stick so thus things can start resolving 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 more and more and more and and at the same time let's not um, get disillusioned again that everything one day will be fully resolved Uh, that's not the case because uh, well guess what the universe is alive there are cycles of life There are cycles in the solar system, in the galaxy, and things are constantly changing. And and this is where we come to a bit more non-dual perspective that, you know, things always are changing as energy, as life experiences. But the only uh, true reality and true stability is the self, that which is not changing. And and or or this, as Buddha put it, the emptiness and what's within it, um, you know, in in his terms. Um, and how how are you finding this relationship between the changing and the unchanging? Yeah, it just there's more of a. Um... Yeah, trans- you just see the kind of like the impermanent nature of things. And so you're generally speaking, not getting so caught up in it, but still still getting caught up in it and, and having to become, yeah, become more and more aware of when those patterns come up. And what, what would be your biggest, biggest uh, take on, on uh, self-realization? Um... I guess the, I don't know if I'm answering this correctly. Like one of the things I would say is this isn't for some special, uh, you don't have to be some special (laughs) uh, God (laughs) or something or avatar or something that this is, uh, even that thought is a funny thought because we are what we are. (laughs) Um, So this is for anyone. Um, and then something else is like, uh, one of the, yeah, I guess one thing is like, it just, it makes, uh, well, for one, to me, even to hear, to understand that there is self-realization, um, that there is such a thing as, um, something beyond the movement, uh, or the impermanent nature of life is like one of the, just the, the greatest blessings. Um, and yeah, I think there's sometimes I feel just immensely grateful that somehow this lifetime that began at a young age and um, it's just such a blessing um, to come into self-realization and it just begins to make life, yeah, a more beautiful um, 
beautiful life and um yeah, yeah. And, and you know no matter the challenges you know w- would you go back to the person let's say 15 years ago who had no clue still all stuck in all those things <laughs> and having no ability to handle them you know right right no not a chance would you, would you ever choose to go back no <laughs> no no 